we're here with uh, former ambassador uh, to Israel. Thomas Nides, uh, Tom, you were the ambassador here for for just about two years' time. Is the current uh, scenario that you're seeing play out uh, here in Israel something that you could have anticipated would have happened? Absolutely not. I think it is. Um, it's a. Um, it's it's beyond. I think any of our uh, wildest imaginations. Um, the horrific attack by Hamas and what they did to the Jewish people. I tell people every day here, it would be like uh, 350 million Americans knowing someone died in the Twin Towers. Uh, the, the the death of children and men and women and grandparents and grandparents, and then brutally taking these people over uh, to Gaza and sticking them in the tunnels. I mean, who does this? What mad men do this? Uh, barbaric behavior. And so would anyone have ever assumed that? No, I wouldn't. And, and obviously it's up to the Israelis to basically do what they need to do to eliminate the threat to the state of Israel. Well, we already see uh, in the press and in, in much of the mainstream public opinion, social media and elsewhere, that the uh, that the sympathies now are shifting towards uh, the Gazan civilians and, and Israel is being turned from the victim of a horrific attack on October 7th into an aggressor. Um, you know, can you address that a little bit and, and tell me, you know, if you think that, that this, uh, this shift in the public opinion is justified? Well, let's, let's make uh, one point very clear. Israel has no choice to eliminate the threat of Hamas. Okay? The United States is the back of Israel to accomplish that, okay? Israel has three priorities here. Number one, to eliminate the threat of Hamas. Number two, to try to get these um, hostages out alive. And number three, to prevent, as best as possible, to make sure we don't have a two-front war. At the meantime, we are not in the fight with the Palestinian people. We're in the fight with Hamas. And no one should make any misunderstanding about that. The reality is Hamas doesn't care about the Palestinian people. They're more than happy to use innocent Palestinians as human shields to force the Palestinians to stay in northern Gaza. And if, if more Palestinians die, as far as Hamas is concerned, it's the price of martyrism. The fact of the matter is today, Hamas could end this today, walk those hostages out of the tunnels, give up, hand over their arms, and all of this will end. The decision is up to Hamas. And the reality is, do I like to see the horrific um, deaths of innocent Palestinians? No, I don't. There's not an Israeli who does. There's not an American that does. And we should do everything we can to prevent that from happening. But make no mistake. How do we get there and how we can end is very clear. And I shall say, I do think ultimately this is going to be probably the most critical 30 days, next 30 days in Israel's history. So as we sit here and think about it, very important to understand how this next 30 days and how important it is, the state of Israel, the security of the state of Israel, security of those hostages, and yes, in the preservation of, of, of lives uh, lost. Why do you think this is the most important 30 days? For the same reasons. One, we the, the opportunity for Israel to to do severe damage to the network of Hamas, can decapitate Hamas. You're never going to be able to eliminate Hamas completely. That's theology, as we learned with ISIS, but they can do a massive amount of work to destroy the infrastructure, the leadership, and do all that. Second, obviously, we need this time to, to get these hostages out. Um, as we all know, every day is important when it comes to hostages. Ultimately, getting those hostages out are critically important. And number three, obviously, keeping pressure on Hezbollah and Iran not to get into a two-front war. All of these are very, very important. And, and as you know, as time marches on, obviously, the, all of those things become more difficult. So this next 30 days and how Israel executes what they have to do is really important. And yes, I am very much focused on making sure we preserve as many innocent lives as possible because none of us want to see uh, innocent Palestinians' lives da damaged and hurt and killed. We need to get more uh, relief in from uh, Egypt, which I know supplies are coming in at a fairly quick pace. Uh, today's news that uh, many um, Americans and other foreign nationals will be allowed to leave um, 
um, uh, Egypt or leave through the Rafa gate is important. So all those things are important. You know, in other war situations, we've seen uh, refugees flee the, the country. And, and you just mentioned the first uh, dual, dual uh, nationals uh, leaving Gaza via the Rafa crossing. You know, if there's so many uh, innocents in, in Gaza who want to flee, uh, should the Rafa crossing be open to allow those who want to get out of the war zone to leave? Yes. Is there any uh, movement, uh, you know, from the U.S. diplomatic effort to to try to open the, the crossing? To, well, you've um, seen you've seen that today. You've seen this. There's a lot of work. I know Secretary Blake is going to be in the region. I think on Friday. I know the White House is working day in day out. I know they're working with the Qataris. I know they're working with the Egyptians. I know many of the Arab countries are involved. We need to get as many innocent people out of there as possible. We need to protect the lives of innocent people. It breaks my heart to see the families being destroyed. But again. I want to make sure no one misunderstands this, okay? How we got there. You know, your viewers understand this, but how we got to the place we got here, the Hamas does not care about the Palestinian people. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. Hamas's only goal is to destroy the state of Israel and create a two front war. When you talk about uh, innocent civilians and Hamas not representing the Palestinian people, the, the Palestinians in Gaza voted for Hamas. Uh, and in addition, because of Hamas's uh, indoctrination and education, uh, the population in the Gaza Strip and even in the Palestinian Authority have been taught from the time that they're children to to hate Jews and to and to value martyrdom. In that case, how do you distinguish and separate between those that actively carried out the attacks on October seventh and those that just support the attacks that took place on October seventh? Again, I think as you probably know better than most, of, that election was almost two decades ago. They haven't had an election in Gaza. Uh, if you ever looked at any surveys and polling, you say that Hamas is is, is not particularly well respected or well liked. Uh, they treat the, the Palestinians in Gaza as disciples. They don't they don't treat them as dignity human beings that they deserve. And by the way, if Hamas really cared really cared about the Palestinian people, the people that they're supposed to be governing. Do you think they would force them to stay in northern Gaza when bombs are raining down upon them? Do you think they would basically cut off the supplies for the Palestinian people or have roadblocks to force them to go back into their homes? Right. Do, do you think that Hamas, for a minute, if they cared about the Palestinian people, they would have done what they did with Israel, which they knew what the reaction of Israel would be? They knew this was a reaction, and they want the most brutal reaction possible from Israel to create a pseudo war. So I, I, am, I sit here and believe in my heart of hearts the vast, the vast majority of Gazans don't, don't not only don't respect, but they hate Hamas. They want to live a normal life. They want to have the same things that you and I want, and they need to get the Hamas needs to be uh, destroyed. You mentioned the hostages. Uh, can you tell me a little bit what the United States might be doing to try to assist in the, in the rescue of hostages? Well, I think that they're in daily contact with obviously the families. I was on the phone this morning with all the American families. Uh, I think there's between 12 and 14 uh, families that are are being, are being held hostage or Americans or dual citizens. Um, all of us are doing everything we can to, to help the hostages, not just the American hostages, but the Israeli hostages. And I know the big team, both the State Department and the White House, working collectively with the, uh, with the uh, uh, Israelis, the Qataris, the Egyptians, and everyone who will take the call. So we're in active discussions trying to help as best we can. You mentioned uh, Hezbollah and also Iran, and that it's the priority of the United States to try to press Israel not uh, to have this uh, explode into a, into a regional conflict. Uh, we're already seeing uh, a lot of activity on the northern border with Hamas firing anti-tank guided missiles and mortars at Israeli positions, Israel fighting back. We've seen ballistic missiles fired from Iranian proxies in Yemen, the Houthis. Um, can Israel really prevent this from, from becoming a, a multi-front conflict? Well, America plays a big role in that. There's two very large ships sitting in the Mediterranean. As Joe Biden likes to say, superpowers don't bluff. So he's basically sent a very strong message to Iran and, and Lebanon. Don't screw with us. And I think ultimately uh, that message is being heard loud and clear. Will it, will it stop it? I, I, you know, I can't tell you for sure. But what I can tell you for sure, the Americans got Israel's back, and we're not going to stand around and stand by if there's a two-front war going on here. So between the between the military prowess of Israel and don't anyone should not 
misconstrued because of what happened in southern Gaza that Israel is not capable of doing an enormous amount of damage uh, to uh, their their enemies. And the United States obviously have their ability to also have Israel's back. They should think very long and hard in Tehran if they decide to do something like this. You know, we look at uh, longstanding American policy, which is on the one hand pushed Israel to make uh, land concessions to Palestinians in the pursuit of peace. And then on the other hand, uh, uh, policies towards uh, trying to bring Iran back into the community of nations, uh, and and even to allow them to you know have some funds uh, to to behave like a normal country. And we're seeing now uh, here that Iranian proxies are are bringing the region to the brink of a of a regional conflict, major regional conflict, if not uh, towards a larger war um, than that. Uh, you know, has the American position or should the American position now change with regard to Iran uh, as the source of instability in the region and also maybe a rethink on the policies of pressing Israel to make uh, concessions uh, to Palestinians? Well, let me, let me take your second one first. I strongly believe, as you know, it's a two-state solution. I strongly believe the importance of not letting this crisis go to waste and allow us to think about how we think about what comes after in Gaza, what comes after the West Bank. I think it makes Israel a stronger democratic Jewish state. I'm very much focused on engaging the Saudis and trying to do a, a Saudi normalization with Israel. I think everything it's it's proven to the world is that Iran is a threat. It's a threat not only to Israel, but a threat to the Americans, and certainly a threat to the if the rest of the Middle East countries. Uh, as it relates to the to the, you know, uh, questions around working with Iran I think one of the things I think it's very important for everyone to understand, Joe Biden was very clear from the get-go, from when he became president of the United States, he would never stand by to allow the Iranians to obtain a nuclear weapon. He's also stood for front and center, as you know, in this crisis on behalf of, the, of Israel. I don't think there's been a Democratic or Republican president who has been more aggressive, more focused on securing the state of Israel's security than Joe Biden has been. And given the fact that if you look at history, this is probably set next to the War of Independence. It's the most significant problem Israel has had. And it's in white, quite frankly, of a president in the White House who has got Israel's back, which has had an enormous impact both psychologically for Israelis uh, and for the region to make sure they don't screw with Israel. So I think ultimately, I think words speak louder, uh, or the actions speak louder than words, and those big ships that are sitting in the Mediterranean. We're directed by the president and are focused on making sure we protect the state of Israel. Uh, after you stepped down as a U.S. ambassador to Israel, it was announced that you were taking a job in the private sector for Wells Fargo. And we just read in the Wall Street Journal and elsewhere that uh, you've essentially stepped down now uh, from the private sector and are going to be uh, more involved in in assisting uh, U.S. Israel issues and uh, you know potentially helping uh, some organizations out there. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you're doing personally? Yeah, I don't, I don't want to overstate my importance here, guys. So, listen, I, as I said to you at the beginning, I think it's the next 30 days. It's going to be some of the most important days in the history of the state of Israel. I felt it was important in my small way to help as much as I can. So I'm working with all the NGOs. I'm working with, as I mentioned earlier, I was on the phone with the hostage families. I'm doing a big event tonight for the UJ in New York. I'm working with uh, I get a bunch of the other organizations around the country. Um I'm just one voice. I don't. I don't want to overestimate or, or exaggerate my importance. So you have a new ambassador who will be arriving, I think, this weekend. Uh, in Jack Lilly, it will be a spectacular ambassador to do a great job. And any way I can help him, any way I can help people, uh, is all I really care about. Ambassador Tom Nides, thank you so much for being with us. Mm -hmm.